hi guys welcome to this new vlog i don't know if you guys can remember from my last vlog but i mentioned that i was going to be running all the batteries of my experiments all through the week so on sunday i mentioned that i had run the second batch so this is monday here and what i did on monday was that i was i first tried to update my lab notes with all of the results from my past experiments because i don't like to leave that for too long otherwise there will be a lot of things for me to put into my lab note so I spent the early part of the morning uh, printing out the gel images and putting them in my lab notes. So once I had finished with all of that, I then started my set, my third batch of experiments, I believe, on that day. So what you're looking at here is the normal um, process I had showed you guys earlier in my 18th vlog. So here is me just pipetting my samples into the tubes and just preparing the DNA samples so that I can make libraries from them. Hi guys, it's currently around 2.52 so I think the last time that I picked the camera to vlog was when I was doing experiments earlier in the morning and now I'm just looking at the quality control data. I'm in the room where the tape station instrument is in. If you guys can remember from yesterday, um, the tape station instrument is the instrument that I use to check the quality of my DNA after making libraries that I need to send for sequencing. So um, I'm going to show you guys how the data looks like before exporting it just so it's easier, it's faster that way. So today's experiment, the data Data looks a bit better than yesterday's own, so the samples are a lot cleaner. Even though I had a few um, problems with some samples, but generally um, the samples look quite okay. So I'll just show you guys instead of just talking. I'll show you guys. So this is how the data looks like from the. This is the tape station instrument as I showed you guys yesterday. This is how the data looks like, and you can see that the the gel images are a lot cleaner for the samples today. In comparison to yesterday, so this is the ladder, and the ladder is like the reference. You need the ladder in order to be able to measure the concentration. So the ladder is like the reference, basically. And then we have my first sample, that's sample 31. Sample, of course, the the yield for the sample is a lot higher than this one, but it's still it's still good enough. It's around 30,400. I usually I aim for 10 nanomolar minimum. So this is so you can see that the samples look a lot cleaner. They're not bands in these ones in comparison to the ones that I had yesterday where I had like you know I told you guys that it could be prima dyma contamination. But these if you can see there's nothing here. So I don't know what happened to this sample when I was pipetting. Um I have no sample here apparently and then I also have no sample here as well. So what I need to do now is that I need to remake the samples tomorrow. So basically sample 37 and sample 35 will be included in my next batch of 15 samples tomorrow. So I think that it's, it's quite okay. There are two other samples that you notice that they were banned or maybe just one, I can't remember. Those ones I'll probably have to repeat um, Prima Dima purification at some point in the future maybe just to get rid of that extra band because I don't like the extra band there because it could interfere with my downstream data analysis so yeah um, today I've got the early detection summer school I don't think I've told you guys about it actually so I signed up for the early detection summer school and it's basically as the name sounds it's a summer school for people and um, cancer researchers that are involved with early detection and it takes the whole week so it's supposed to be from Monday all the way to Friday normally we're supposed to do it in I think the University of Manchester so there was one that happened last year that was supposed to take place in the United States but I wasn't able to go even though I had planned to go because of the pandemic ended up doing it online so it was online and I enjoyed it even though it was online there were lots of things that I learned about early detection and how you know you get trademarks and how you get your diagnostics authorized and all of those really good stuff that I enjoyed so I decided to sign up again for this year's summer school and I actually applied for a scholarship for that because you have to pay and yeah, so the scholarship is the one funding my summer school, uh, basically. So yeah, it's going to be from four to about six or seven ish every day up until Thursday. So that's why I, I have to try my best to come to the lab at least around seven or eight. So I have to leave my place around six a.m. so that I can finish all of this library person stuff in time around this time around three past three such that i can prepare for the summer school itself and listen to all of the talks so um right now i've not had lunch i'm going to eat lunch for 30 minutes or so once i'm done eating lunch i think i'm going to cycle back home because i'd really like to be at home when i'm 
listening to the talks and hopefully I'll catch you guys um, some other time when I pick up the camera again. Bye for now. So my last slide really is just on the International Alliance for Cancer Early Detection. Um, this is a very exciting approach with five partners. You'll learn more about it throughout this um, this week and, and also some of the research that is coming out of this alliance in addition to people who are not associated with the alliance that really I think drives forward the opportunities of early detection and an excitement about a career in early detection as we go forward. Um, 7.25 actually and I'm about to eat breakfast and head to the lab the later part of yesterday I ended up not vlogging so I just thought that I'm not too sure if I'll be able to vlog today so I started to vlog in the morning just in case I don't have the time to vlog during the day since last week ending of last week I've been waking up around 6 a.m. because my experiment takes six hours to finish I decided that it would be better for me to wake up 6 a.m. because if I wake up 6 a.m. it usually takes me around an hour and a half to get ready and then once I finish I can cycle it takes me 30 minutes to cycle to the lab so by 8 30 let's just say that I would be at the lab ready to start my experiment so if I start at 8 30 round up I will finish around 2 30 or 3 p.m. and if I finish around to 3 p.m. I can then leave early from the lab because actually what I'm trying to say is that I thought that an early start will allow me to finish early such that I can go home to rest but that being said um, my normal routine I don't wake up as early as 6 a.m. I'm not a morning person um, so it's been a bit of struggle for me waking up around that time and yeah I just feel lethargic most times when I wake up around 6 a.m. and I just hope that eventually my body gets used to it because I think that I've gotten to a phase of my PhD project where I need to you know um, do a lot of large-scale experiments and compare them to before so yeah um, that's why I feel yeah tired these days actually in the morning and um, also when I'm done I, like around the afternoon time I feel tired as well so yeah I can remember yesterday I was just sat on my bed and then as I was listening to the summer school talk I was just closing my eyes and I was literally like you know forcing myself to open my eyes back that was the level of um, fatigue that I had felt so yeah um, so to help my solution I like to have like something heavy with fiber I'll eat up now and I'll catch you guys guys so I'm here again I'm just coming to check my data for today's batch I don't know why I can't find my ladder I guess I will have to use the electronic ladder I have no idea why the ladder is not showing oh wait I think I forgot to put the ladder yeah that's why the ladder is not showing but the good thing is that there's also electronic ladder if your ladder isn't present so the battery on my main camera died when I was upstairs running the tape station. So what I did was that I went to rerun the samples just because I don't like to have doubt whenever I run experiment because the more doubt I have at the very early onset, when I see the data, I will start to think of all possible reasons and then all of the doubts will start to manifest again. I'm waiting for the tape station to finish running and now I want to just eat um, lunch because I'm starving. Okay, so now I'm back 
back at the tape station room and I'm just looking at the data. It looks quite good. It's just what I would expect. I'll show you guys in a moment. So you can see that the primer, con the primer dimer contamination is non-existent for these samples, which is a relief. Alhamdulillah. So yeah, they look quite okay. Now I just have to export the data as usual and then I would go home. I'm running out of bread, so first I will go to the supermarket to get bread and then once I get the bread I will run home because the summer school starts around 4pm and I have a few minutes to walk on before then. Um, I doubt maybe 30 minutes perhaps I'll walk on those and then I'll catch you guys later. So I'm back home now. I don't know if you guys can see um, the schedule for today's um, talks. So at the moment, I think you can see the aim of this session five is um, science of early detection. That's the title. The aims of objectives can be found here. So the first part, I think I missed the virtual registration because I was cycling. The genetic risk talk is on. We have gynecological cancer early detection, which is quite interesting. I'm very keen on the talk. And then imaging and early detection later on, the role of cancer models in early detection. And then there's a discussion. So after that, then the other parts of the talk from five, from 6 p.m. all the way to 7, I think this is probably going to be about inequality or disparities, but it will be interesting to see. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but anyways, that's just the review of today's um, schedule. And yeah, I will tune in to the talk now on Zoom. A male carrier with prostate cancer and an ovarian cancer in a female carrier makes up the very clear component of breast cancer risk in the BRC1 and BRC2 genes. Hi guys. So basically, today is a different day. So I started my experiment about 8.30 a.m. in the morning and it's currently 2.23. So I'm going to show you guys the result from the quality control to show you how the lab is all together. There are seven batches that I'm supposed to run because I told you that I have um, over 90 samples to start with and then later on I would run the other 30 something samples so I'll just show you guys the data now instead of me just bumbling and bumbling up this is how today's data sets look like so you can see that um, the gel images are a lot cleaner in this case so you can see for example that if we move from here, here, here yeah, you can see that there are no like primer dimer contamination the only thing I'm concerned about is over amplification so I'm not too sure if there's because I'm using a lot of PCR cycles that could lead to artifact in my data but I just hope that's not the case but yeah generally the data looks quite good so I've just finished exporting the data so now I'm very very hungry actually so I've got a meeting with our lab manager in 35 minutes um, at 3 p.m so what I would do first is that I would eat my lunch my sandwich real quickly such that I can prepare for the meeting with my lab the lab manager and once I finish speaking to her I'm going to cycle back home because today uh, because of the early detection so much God, I told you guys about I'd like to tune in early enough so after when I finish with my experiment, I tune into the meeting with our lab manager. I usually have a meeting with her every two weeks to update her about my lab work and if I need help with anything specifically. She's super helpful and she's one of the support systems that I have here in the lab. Once I finished talking to her, I took my bike and I went home to complete the early detection summer school. This brings me to the end of this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. If you found it interesting, don't forget to leave me a like, comment and share as well. Thank you so much for watching to the very end. I hope you remain safe and you're in the best of health. See you on my next one. Bye!